getting straight to the point, you go ahead and click this button on this website to download the Minecraft server. For reference, any website I mention in this video, or any commands I use, will be listed in the video description in order of when I mention them. So go ahead and download the Minecraft server. On Chrome, you'll be prompted with a keep or don't keep message, because jar files can typically contain things that may or may not damage the computer. This is from the Minecraft official website, so it'll be fine. Keep the file, and then don't close this web page because we're going to need this line right here. Once you've downloaded the server file, go ahead and head over to the Java website if you don't have the most recent version of the Java 64-bit. I can't stress this enough, you need the 64-bit version of Java. This is because the 64-bit version of Java allows you to allocate more RAM than normal on your Minecraft server, which I think is greater than 2 gigabytes. So make sure that you download the 64-bit version if you intend to allocate more than 2 gigabytes of RAM to your Minecraft server. Once you've downloaded and installed Java 64-bit, go ahead and create a folder by right-clicking on your screen, going to New, hit Folder, and name it whatever you want. Then take the server you downloaded from the Minecraft website and put it into this folder. Double-click on the server to run it, and after you run it, you'll only have a couple of these documents, one of them being this document called EULA. Go ahead and open up the EULA, and right here, it'll be listed as false. You're going to want to change it to true, and after you change it to true, go ahead and save this document and exit out of it. Then run the server again, and it'll generate all of these files. Once it's generated all these files, we're going to want to create a temporary document in here. But by right-clicking, going to New, and then New Text Document. Once we do that, go ahead and open it up, and we're going to go ahead Go back here, take this file right here, copy it, go over to here, paste it, add a couple of lines, right, a couple of dashes, sorry, right there, and then you'll notice this weird at echo off and pause that I have. Go ahead and copy that as well, it'll be listed in the video description, and now I'm going to explain what this XMX and XMS is. This XMX is the maximum amount of RAM the server will use. So right now it's only going to use 1 gigabyte, because 1 gigabyte is 1024 megabytes. Over here, the XMS represents the minimum number of RAM the server will use, which is currently listed at 1 gigabyte or 1024 megabytes. So if you want to change that, for example, I could go ahead and change this to 2048 for my XMX, and now the maximum amount of RAM the server will use will be 2048 megabytes. Look at the amount of RAM you have on your computer to determine how much RAM you should allocate for this server. But then, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click File, Save As. And notice we're already in the server folder. We're going to want to call this Start.Bat. Hit save, exit out of this, and you'll notice that there's this new start thing right here. This will start the server with however much RAM you told it to run with. You don't need this temporary folder anymore, so go ahead and delete it. Once you've done that, now we need to open server properties. And apparently it doesn't know how to open this file, so go ahead and right click on it and hit open with. Always use this app to blah, 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 more apps. Go ahead and hit Notepad, and OK. You'll be greeted with all these different options, but the thing that we are most concerned with at the moment is the IP. So scroll down and find the server IP. Now, to get the server IP, what you're going to need to do is go down and type in CMD to get Command Prompt. Once you're presented with Command Prompt, you're going to want to go ahead and enter the following command, IP config space slash all. I'm not going to hit enter because that would reveal all my information, but I will show you what that looks like. Give me a moment. It'll look something like this when it pops up. Notice all my information I don't want you to see is redacted. Don't give this kind of information out to just anybody. Then you're going to want to scroll down here until you find this IPv4 address. This is the address you plug into your server's.properties 
file. So in here, you're going to want to copy whatever the IP is right here that's in the IPv4 address and put it as this server IP. Now, to get your server port, you're going to need to port forward, which means you need to access what's called your modem or default gateway. And notice, in the ipconfig slash all, there is a default gateway. Find the IP address of this default gateway, and what you're going to go ahead and do once you get that IP address of the default gateway, is you're going to go ahead and type that directly into your browser's search bar. Yes, 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 okay. Once you do that, you'll be directed to whatever your login is for your router or modem. For me, I'm using Comcast Business. For you, it may differ. So look up how your router or modem operates in the user interface on their website. For me, I kept clicking through these various things after I logged in until I found port forwarding. Once I got into port forwarding, I hit add service. After that, I can name the service whatever I want, like server Minecraft, and then make sure it's on TCP slash UDP. Enter the IPv4 address that we used for the server before, and then pick a port. Now for me, I sometimes use the port 57354. Other times I use many different numbers. As long as the port number is at least in the tens of thousands or more, you should be fine. As long as it doesn't go above around 63,000, you should be fine. And you're going to want to make the start port and the end port the same number. Once you do that, click save for the service. And what that should do is it should allow your computer to run services over that port, which means that people can send data to your server, i.e. play on your server. Then what you're going to want to do after you set that port to whatever number you want it to, you go over to server port and server.properties and enter that port, whatever you decided it, decided it would be. By default, the Minecraft server port is set to 25565, and you change this to whatever you have set it to inside of your modem. Now we're going to go back to the modem really quick, and after all that's done and saved, you can just log out of it because you don't need to. Make sure you hit the logout button. Like this. And it's going to take a while to log out, probably, but that's fine. Next, you're going to want to go to IP Chicken by just typing this into Google. I will link IPChicken.com in the video description. I will not show you my IP because I don't want you guys randomly accessing my server. But once you have all of the IP address that I just mentioned, is the IP address you give to your friends. The IP address that you found initially, the IPv4 address in ipconfig slash all, is the address you use to log into your own server on your home network. But for anyone else that's either across the country, in a different city, in a different state, you give them this IP chicken address, and then afterwards, let's say the IP address is 174.125.34.56, and then, um, let's say you did the port 61234. That's how you would give it to them to be able to access your server. Now, once you've entered the port and once you've entered the IP, go ahead and save this. You don't need to worry about this query.port right here. That's for more advanced things that we're not concerned about right now. So once that's saved, go ahead and exit out of that. But now we have another problem. Notice that this server is called server. However, this start file, if I go ahead and hit edit, says that it's going to run Minecraft server.1.16.1.jar. Dot 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 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy everything that isn't the dot .jar. Control C, exit out of this, and now for this server, I hit rename, Control V. What this will do, once I double click this, is it'll go ahead and run the Minecraft server with the RAM I specified it to run. And once it's done loading everything up, then you have your Minecraft server. And that is how you not only install a Minecraft server with the RAM you want to, but also port forward it 
etc etc now if you want to edit more things in the where did it go do, 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 do. oh right in the server.properties folder the properties file right here if you want to edit more of the things in here like game mode survival or game mode creative or what have you you can edit it to your heart's content have fun with it and enjoy your minecraft server and thank you for watching